guys so much for joining me. Uh, today we're going to be doing a quick review on a trail camera that was sent to me. Uh, the company is Seomer. This is the CY65 trail camera. Okay, just a quick disclaimer. I wanted to let you know I did not purchase the Seomer CY65 camera. Uh, they did reach out to me. They asked if I'd be willing to do a product review on the camera. I told them I would. So they sent the camera to me for free of charge. I don't know anybody that works there. Uh, with that being said, I am able to give you my honest opinion on the camera. Uh, the camera on Amazon currently goes for around $89.99. It did come in a envelope. I took it out of the envelope, but I've not opened the box yet. So let's get started. Comes with your typical tree strap, USB, and some hardware mounting for uh, a fence post or the building, something like that. All right, so it does look like a nice little trail camera. It does have a Python cable lock uh, position here, uh, along with your tree strap. It just has a single door at the bottom that opens up. You have your viewing monitor as you're setting up your camera uh, and your batteries go in the tray that uh, pops out of the bottom. I really like this option. Uh, you just push that button when you get to the tree, you pull the tray out, change your batteries, slide it back in. It's as easy as that. It does take eight AA batteries. You also have the option for a six volt on the bottom and it does have your standard quarter 20 um, mounting on the bottom as well that you can use your hardware and mounting bracket if you want to use those instead of a strap. So one nice thing about the camera is it does come equipped with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. They also have a QR code that you can scan to put the app on your phone, which I'll be doing that. It does take a full SD card in the side. So let me get some batteries put in this and I'll run through the setup really quick. Now I do know just from doing a little bit of research on the camera, the video is in 1296p, which is a sharper image than your 720 or 1080p. Once we get some pictures and images, I'll share those with you and we'll take a look at them. Uh, I do know you can turn off the side motion detectors and I believe the infrared sensors at nighttime do shoot out to 32 feet. Okay, the manual says to use a class six SD card or faster. Uh, this one is a class 10, so it's gonna be faster than a six. It's 32 gigabytes. We'll get this thing turned on. So you hit the mode button and then you can toggle up and down. So I'm gonna set it to photo and video. I'm gonna do one photo and the video length for 10 seconds. Uh, I still have to scan the QR code and get the phone app set up and then I'll go in, get everything ready. I'll get the camera hung up and we'll see what kind of images we get. Well, I just finished a run and I decided to come out here and pull the trail camera and wrap up this review. Now there's been a few things that have transpired that I need to explain to you. Uh, I normally don't take this long to do a review, but I wanted to give the camera a fair shot. So I had left it out longer and I did move it to a new location and I'll explain all that and um, give you more detail as we go. Bottom line, I had it on the edge of a lake that has a lot of alligators coming up. I can see the camera from the road that I drive on on a daily basis. And I'll show you an image of it right here that I captured from my cell phone. You can see the gator laying in front of the trail camera that's on that post right behind it. And 
I saw a lot of gators laying in front of the trail camera and I thought I would get a ton of gator footage. When I pulled the SD card and looked at it, I only got two or three gators for the entire time it was out. So I was a little disappointed that I did not capture the gator walking up the bank and laying down in front of the camera. The second thing I noticed was the center of the screen seemed a little blurry and I didn't know if it was because the camera was facing over the lake and it was picking up trees on the far tree line that was probably 150 to 200 yards away and I thought that makes sense that it's blurry but I wanted to test that theory and see if it was true so I moved the camera into the woods and I didn't have a lot of animal footage here I do have some uh, armadillo and uh, some a raccoon and uh, me walking in and out to check the camera and you can see some blurriness even in those pictures uh, you can see blurriness in the trees which are only probably 20 and 30 feet from the camera I think I look a little blurry I also want to point out that I think having the camera set up for one picture and then it triggers the video uh, I'm a little disappointed in the delay in video activating and the reason I can point that out to you is I have a picture of a bird and the bird flies away and then it the camera changes to video and I pick up the bird in flight but the bird is way far away before the camera even activates. So you can see just how far away the bird is before the video kicked in. So I was a little disappointed in the delay between picture and video. Another thing that I did to test out the trail camera was I hung a different trail camera in the same location that I had the CY65. It was right there on that post and the alligators are coming in and out of this little lake. Now the CY65 did not capture the gators walking up in front of the camera or when they walked away and went back in the water and left. I only have very short footage of them laying in front of the camera. So I hung up another camera to see if that camera would capture them walking in and out of the water. And I also wanted to look at the background and see if the center of the picture was blurry on this camera and compare that to the CY65. I also tried lowering the comparison camera to see if that might help trigger when a gator walked in front of it and that didn't help either. So that's not going to work with either camera. So it's not an issue with the camera. All right, so now with the additional cameras put out, I can show you the images from those cameras and compare that to the CY65 and let's take a look at how they are. And wrapping up this trail camera review, I do want to touch on a couple more things. The audio on the CY65 works really well, so I'm impressed with that. The other thing I wanted to touch on was the uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth connection with the phone app and connectivity with the camera while it's out in the field. 
I had a really difficult time getting the phone app set up and getting the camera to connect to the phone. It took me probably 20 minutes to get it all connected. Uh, I had to repeat the steps multiple times. I finally got the camera connected. Now when I put it out in the uh, by the lake where the alligator is and back here in the woods, um, it kept dropping the connection. Uh, it would tell me to connect it, I would connect it, uh, and right as it would pull the camera up, it would drop it, and I would have to go back into the app again, reconnect, it would tell me to connect again, so I would reconnect again, and it would finally connect. I would be in downloading pictures, and there were times where it would just boot me out, and I would have to reconnect to the app again and do it all over again. Uh, so it was a little bit frustrating. Um, other than that, I'm going to uh, let you guys look at the quality of the pictures and the video and make your own determination. Thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope this review was helpful. If you did find it helpful, I ask that you would give me a thumbs up, maybe subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification for more content like this. I hope you guys were able to get out and enjoy your own adventures. Take care.